Adventures of Jeff and Rachel. We're going to do a bike check on my 2020 Focus Jam. I haven't found any reviews of it on the internet, so at the end I'm going to try and do a little bit of a review on my initial impressions of the bike. But uh, it'll be awesome. Check it out. Alright, so this is a 2020 Focus Jam 899. It's got 29 inch wheel in the front and a 29 inch wheel in the rear. Um, the front triangle is carbon fiber and the rear triangle is aluminum. So for the all important numbers that everybody wants to know, this bike has a 450 millimeter reach in size large. It has a 67.3 head tube angle. The effective seat tube angle is 74.2 degrees, which is it's kind of conservative by some of today's extreme geometry standards. The chain stay length is 440 millimeters and the overall wheelbase of this bike is 1201 millimeters. The bike comes in a little heavier than claimed. The claimed weight on this size is 13.25 kilograms but when I weighed it, it was 31 pounds or 14.06 kilograms. So it's a little bit portlier. Um, and I even converted to tubeless um, and I changed out the handlebars and stuff, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, I put some lighter components on it and it's still a little heavier than advertised. I think this might have to do with the aluminum rear triangle, um, but it is what it is. It's great for a trail bike. 31 pounds is still quite manageable on the trail. For suspension up front we have 140 millimeter of travel rock shocks pike ultimate and look how beautiful that silver color is for the rear suspension we have a 140 millimeter rock shocks super deluxe select shock with focuses fold suspension linkage design all right, my model here, my wife, is going to demonstrate Focus's suspension. <laughs> my wife, Rachel, here is going to help me show you uh, Focus's FOLD suspension system. FOLD stands for Focus Optimized Linkage Design. As I understand, it is a linkage-driven single pivot this design starts with a regressive curve, which is allows the suspension to stay soft and supple for small hits and bumps during the first phase of travel. During the second phase of travel, it steeply ramps up and the firm in firmness to prevent bottom outs and big hits on drops. All right, Ray, make it work one more time. Come on, put your put your whole weight into it. <laughs> I'm not very heavy. <laughs> so. I found that this suspension works really great, um, but it's very sensitive to rebound. Um, when you're on the trail, uh, we have one of our audio, other videos, you can see me crash um, because I had the rebound set too high. Okay, so my suspension setup on my RockShox Pike Ultimate up front, I run 85 PSI with eight clicks of rebound, and I have two tokens and zero low speed compression. I don't think any low speed compression is needed on this fork. Um, to me, it just feels like it adds sand to it. Um, I like it the way it is. Uh, one of my also favorite features, this is the RCT3 version. So it has an open pedal and firm. I only ever use the open setting or the firm pedal, or the or, um, open or the firm setting um, because going uphill, the firm setting is super nice um, to lock it out. As far as the rear shot goes, I'm running 190 PSI. Um, I had it as high as 195, but I put it at 190. I like to run a little firm. I'm not that heavy, uh, so, but I do like to shock firm. The rebound is four clicks out. I found that this suspension design is very sensitive to rebound. Um, so four clicks is where I'm at for now. I may change it. I have to do some more downhill testing, especially in Rudy stuff. So it gets a good balance. I feel like I have the suspension balance, but more testing will dictate what I do from there. All right, let's check out my cockpit. I have 
nuke proof horizon 35 millimeter stem matched with a nuke proof horizon carbon handle far in 780 width and 35 millimeter diameter in the 25 millimeter rise um, i switched out from the stock 55 millimeter length stem that was made by a company called bbb and so were the handlebars they were 780 width and 15 millimeter rise but with my current setup here with the nuke proof um, you get a lot for your money with nuke proof products um, and I really enjoy this bar stem combo. Uh, for grips, I'm running Ergon GA2 Fat. Let's see if we can get a bigger, better look at them. I got big hands and I really think uh, they take a lot of vibration out of the trail. And pairing with a carbon fiber, carbon fiber bar, they do really great. Uh, my shifter is an uh, XTR 12 speed from Shimano. Um, I have some custom wrap uh, around here. Uh, it's used for cables. I saw it on Scott bikes, but uh, I think I do. Re it does really well to keep your cables organized, and I kind of copied them. Uh, I got it from a German electronic store called Conrad. Um, so if you're looking for it and you're over here in Germany, check them out. Uh, for brakes, I have the Shimano Dior XT M8120 brakes. The new ones, they have a different uh, the iSpec EV clamp, and finishing it off, I have a KS. Lev Southpaw remote for my dropper. All right, my beautiful assistant here is going to help me film the next part of my contact points here. I'm running an Ergon Men's SM Pro saddle in the small medium size. Uh, if you're a guy, I highly recommend Ergon saddles. Um, it's got a nice channel cut out for your man bits. Um, relieves perineal pressure. They're super good. Uh, the post right now I'm currently running is the stock post that came on the bike. It is a KS E30i post, and that's paired with my uh, KS Southpaw lever, which will show you how it goes up and down. All right. Up front, my brakes that I'm running are Shimano Dior XT 4 piston M8120 calipers with a 203 Shimano RT86 Ice Tech rotor. For the rear brake, I'm running the same as the front Shimano Dior XT M8120 4 piston brakes with a RT86 180 millimeter rear rotor. So originally, this bike came with Magura MT Trail 4 piston front and uh, two piston rear brakes um, with carbon levers nothing against magura brakes i just uh, prefer the feel of shimano brakes and i've been riding shimanos for so long you get accustomed to that uh, bite and lever feel so i went ahead and swapped these out and some lucky guy on german ebay got got them for a killer deal so i could pay for these all right next for the wheel set it came with mavic xa 29 inch wheels they have a 30 millimeter internal width and in the rear we have the maxis id360 rear hub okay assistant give me a sound test here i have this id360 hub on two other of my bikes and i really like it um, the only downside is the wheel set's kind of heavy. It may be a future upgrade or I just may leave them the way they are. So up front I'm running a Maxxis Dissector 29 by 2.4 with a 3C Max Terra EXO tubeless ready. The bike originally came with a Maxxis High Roller 2 but I don't really think that's a good front tire and this tire just came out so I figured I'd give it a try. For the rear tire, I'm running the Maxxis Minion DHR2 in dual compound, 29 by 2.3. Um, I intended to run a dissector in the back as well. I ordered it, but one of the negatives, which I'll talk about later in the video, is that I can only fit a 2.3 in the back of this rear triangle, which is was one of the most deciding factors that I almost didn't buy this bike because the 2.3 is the maximum tire clearance in the rear. 
Moving on to the drivetrain. Start off with the cranks. These are 170 millimeter race face next to our carbon cranks. They have the little rubber booties on them, paired with a 32 tooth race face chain ring. And I'm running Crank Brothers Stamp 7 Danny McCaskill Edition pedals with the long pins, and these are the large size. Um, they provide a really great stable platform. Moving on, the rear derailleur is a Shimano XTR 12 speed matched with a SLX uh, 10 to 51 tooth cassette. If you haven't tried the new Shimano 12 speed drivetrain, y'all are missing out. It is the crispest shifting that I've ever used. Uh, this 12 speed range is amazing. I don't think I've even on my climbs yet hit that 51 tooth rear sprocket. That thing is amazing. Um, crisp crisp shifting uh, as far as these race face next R cranks uh, I was a little disappointed um, that they're only 170 millimeter it might be a future change out but I'll discuss that later in the video all right so some custom touches I have done to my bike um, I have frame protection that I put on here from uh, I use a company called racer tape um, this is the three inch wide eight mil version and you get I got like a 60 foot roll of it um, I've custom cut it all the pieces I don't know if you can actually see it's hard to tell in the Sun but I have it um, all over the bike I've done it down the chain stays because you can actually see here a little bit where my heels have been rubbing and then I use the good old uh, 3m mastic tape uh, for some extra protection down here and up here to silence the chain for some chain slap and then this bike didn't come with a down tube protector which is very strange from you know bikes these days especially being a carbon fiber frame so i put some of that 3m mastic tape down here until i can find something a little bit better um but i got frame protection tape all over this thing because this color is absolutely beautiful and amazing and i would like it to stay that way um i don't like scratched bikes but it is a bike i understand it is going to get used all right, another custom touch is I'm running an all mountain style mug guard. For now, it's a little short one. It's probably what I'll leave on there for summer, but I'll probably switch out to something with a little bit more coverage during the winter. All right, guys, we had to change locations for our filming. Um, it's after 10 o'clock in the morning in Germany and the Bavarians are out. Um, these people love the outdoors, coronavirus be damned. Um, so we had to move with a bunch of little kids enjoying the ducks. I can't blame them. It's absolutely gorgeous spring day here. So we moved over here and we're going to film our conclusion. All right, Jeff. So what type of riding did you buy this bike for? Well, first of all, I didn't buy this bike. My wife bought this bike for me for my birthday because she's awesome. Okay, so like the review portion, um, for me, because of the great deal I got on it, um, which I stated in a previous video, um for the money uh it's a great value with the spec of components it comes with the way it comes out of the box it's it's a fantastic bike i came into purchasing this bike um as a trail bike i know it's not an enduro bike i know it's not a cross-country machine it's a trail bike so it really suits the style that i like to ride um the geometry numbers are more conservative than what you know some guys like to run the extreme geometry and slack and long and all that stuff and low for me it's kind of that in-between bike because i still feel um drawn to the steeper shorter reach bikes because that's what i grew up riding but as far as this it's a super stable platform it does the tight trails well and you can also with 140 millimeters of travel in the back and 140 up front you can really smash some stuff too. Um, some of the stuff I would change, um, probably the first glaring thing that comes to mind is that in 2020, um, having only clearance for a 2.3 or 2.35 tire in the back is kind of a bit of an oversight. Most trails bikes these days, you should have clearance for at least 2.6 tires front and rear, whether you like running that size or not. Some people have a preference. I have a preference to running bigger tires um, being that I only fit a 2.35 in the back, it was something that I almost didn't buy this bike because of that. But after riding it around, you know, I'm not noticing it as much, but there are situations where it may get sloppier or certain types of terrain that I would like to run a bigger tire in the back. 
one of the other things that I think was a bit of an oversight is on a size large bike this only comes with 170 millimeter length cranks oh, come in there um, 170 millimeter cranks for me I'm trying to get used to them I'm I hate that I might have to you know these are very expensive next star cranks if I have to change them out I doubt I'll buy another set of carbon fiber cranks um, I've been riding 175s even though I'm a short guy I've been riding 175s for so long it's what feels comfortable immediately when I got on this I noticed and people say oh it's only five millimeters well I can notice five millimeters in crank length like when I ride a BMX bike I ride 180 millimeter cranks because that's what feels good and when I go down a BMX track that's what I can spin so like this I feel when I really got to punch it up um, a hill I'm missing that torque yes I can spin faster on this but I haven't contacted the ground or had any strikes with it yet um, when you compress the suspension so really a size large should come with 175 millimeter um, something else uh, this bike out of the box I uh, had a couple issues with the powder coat. I, you probably can't see on filming, but like the the coating, you know, it's right down there where the weld, and then back here on the brake mounts, the powder coat was uh, was chipped out, um, and that came from the factory. Blems right out of the box. To me, it's a little quality control issue. Um, I contacted Focus directly and they referred me to a dealership that I bought it from, but coronavirus, you know, we'll see what happens. But Thanks for watching my 2020 Focus Jam 899 bike check. And thanks for watching the hashtag Adventures of Jeff and Rachel. Um, like and subscribe, leave a comment, um, try to put links in the description of everything about my bike and the build. Um, we'll link somewhere over here to a cool video. I don't know how the pros do it. <laughs>